Welcome back to episode two of uh, The Vid Got Me. Okay, The Vid, The COVID, as in COVID-19. If you're just tuning in, uh, make sure you go back to the channel and get episode one of How The Vid Got Me in Barbados so you can get caught up to today. Our story picks up with me getting on The Walking Dead bus as it picked up all of the COVIDs from around the island. We pull up, it definitely was not a hospital. White buildings, there's a parking lot under white tents and the parking lot is, is surrounded by barbed wire, okay? Barbed wire. You would think that everyone on the bus was bleeding from their eyes and had got caught snacking on brains, okay? That's, that's what it looked like, okay? We get off the bus and they usher us into this parking lot. There's some chairs, there's some benches, there's some patches of grass. Figure it out, make yourself comfortable, we'll be right with you. All of these medical personnel are, are going in and out. They're all like uh, Monsters Inc, like DD-214, all covered up in hazmat gear. And they got all the sick people outside. For a good hour, nothing. We're just sitting outside, cold. It's now cold. I don't know what part of the island I was on, but the, where the resort was, it was, it was like beach weather. Wherever I'm at right now, luckily I was smart enough to take a hoodie because I know I get cold. I needed more than a hoodie. It was cold. People were out there with jackets. I don't know where we were. I have no idea. So after about an hour, someone comes out and they say, let us know that we need to fill out this paperwork and that a nurse is going to take our vitals and then a, a doctor will see us and we'll go from there and they will determine if you're going to stay here at the facility or go back and isolate wherever you came from. So we wait some more. Again, there's no one coming in and out. No one is communicating. There's just You see a whole bunch of healthcare workers just kind of hanging out on the other side of the fence and then we're all over here. At this point, I have to use the restroom. So I go in, I go inside and I admit TV has spoiled me. I expect every health facility to resemble Gray Sloan Memorial from Gray's Anatomy. And if you don't watch Gray's Anatomy, we can't be friends. Anyway, so I go in, the walls are like worn down and, and there's equipment everywhere that's not wrapped up or sanitized. There's just random equipment in the hallways. The halls, like it literally felt like I was in a, a movie. I survived going to the bathroom. I go up outside, go back outside to my spot. More unknown time go, passes by. They finally start coming out. They took my blood pressure, my temperature, and my pulse. That was it. That concluded the vitals. I filled out this long questionnaire all about COVID, about my health history, about where we've been on the island. All of these things make sense. It's fine. The only box I could check was the runny nose. And, and that was it because I had a little runny nose and I coughed like three times on the way over here on the bus. Once again, I am like, I don't want them to think I'm lying if I only put runny nose because that dissipates by lunch. But I did cough on the bus and I don't want them to be like, oh, she coughed on the bus. Keep her here. She lied. So I put cough. That's what I put. Okay. More time goes by. More, more time with no communication, nothing happening. Everybody got pulled into. And then even like the little air that they brought us into, they didn't bring us all the way into the health facility. It was like the little vestibule. Like you have like the double doors, you go in and then there's another set of double doors. They pulled their little equipment out to this little holding area and took everyone's vitals with the same equipment. There was no sterilization. I didn't see them spraying down the blood pressure thing or spraying down the thing. It just... This is a health facility. We walk, oh, so I guess it's like, oh, well, y'all already got COVID, so we ain't gotta be careful. Hey, using the same equipment. Hashtag resources saved. Okay, so people are getting antsy, and more people are like not like knocking on the fence because it's like an open fence. More people are knocking on the fence and trying to get some information from the healthcare workers. They don't know. They're all chilling, literally taking a break, chilling laughing giggling i'm over here abandoned in another country without my husband and y'all over here taking a, a daggone kit kat break for the record i didn't actually see any kit kats but they they definitely were chilling and having a snack anyway not that i'm saying that healthcare workers don't deserve a snack y'all deserve a snack but at this point we didn't actually see anybody working to need a break because we've all just been sitting there for hours and watching them chill anyway so they start calling people over one at a time they called me over and she says Okay, so your vitals look good. You don't have a fever. I could have told you that. She said, everything else looks good. So the only symptom you've had is a cough? I said, yes. She said, are you, is it, are you coughing up any phlegm? I said, yes, a little bit, but it was clear. Like if you hadn't, hadn't been working out, like I haven't been, and you're, you're a little fat in the chest now, and then you run and you get, you get some phlegm broken up, it's clear like that. Uh, abort! <laughs> Like eight steps in my heart rate and my lungs and no chica. Que 
estás haciendo? And I said, no, ma'am, zero colors whatsoever, just regular bodily mucus in my chest. A little bit has come up. She said, okay, well, we're going to release you to isolate at another facility. Another facility? You mean my resort? She said, oh, you can't go back to your resort. Ma'am, <laughs> I wish you would tell me I can't go back to my resort. One thing you got to know about me is that I'm a New Yorker. I grew up in New York. Regardless of what my husband or my parents say, I know I was born somewhere else, but I grew up in New York. And as New Yorkers, we don't show emotion on the outside. You don't show fear. You don't show panic. None of that. It all happens on the inside. So when this lady said, uh, you're going to isolate somewhere else on the inside, I said, I will rip this whole thing down. I will burn this entire island to the ground if you think I'm going to stay here. On the outside, I said, ma'am, my resort said that I would be returning to Sandals. That's what they said. She said, oh, you're staying at Sandals. I said, yes, I am. She said, okay, well, they're gonna have to request for you to come back. I said, say no more. I pulled out my phone, start texting the health manager. I was like, ma'am, you need to get me out of here. They said, you gotta request me. You better request me right now, I'm ready to go. She says, no problem, I got you. So I go sit down. The lady, lady calls me back over after some time and she says, hey, you're good to go. You'll be returning to Sandals. However, you do have to wait for everyone that was on your bus to be assessed because we can't have you guys on different transportation. You don't have to go on the same bus you came in because of coded protocols. I got to stay here for all of these people, all, all 30 of us. The job just had out here since, since seven o'clock, freezing to death. It is now almost midnight. I just want to put that out there. No problem. As long as you know, and I know, and everybody here know that I'm going back to the resort, we good. I will sit here and wait. It took about another hour for everybody to get assessed. No one saw a doctor, not one person. There were a lot of people from the island that ended up having to stay at that health facility, or there were other folks that had to get sent somewhere else, but none of us actually got sent to see a doctor, no one. No doctor came out. We all got handled in that parking lot under those tents, surrounded by barbed wire like we were bleeding from the eyes and snacking on brains earlier in the day. Whatever, no one actually saw the doctor. All of this could have taken place at the hotel, at the resort. My little health manager could have taken my vitals and, and filled out the questionnaire and let them know she's good to stay in her room by herself. That didn't happen. I'm not even sure if we were still on the island at that point because it took so long to get there. We probably could have transported to some other island and I didn't even know. I don't know, either way, we're getting back on the bus to go home. I got back to the room at about 2 a.m. I'm a grown woman and my body shuts down at like nine o'clock. This was a very long day of emotional stress. I was exhausted by the time we got back on the bus and the bus that they sent us back in was actually much nicer and it had shots. So instead of us doing this the whole way back, it was this. And I did this. Get up to the room, all tucked in, health manager calls and just make sure that I got in okay. And she said, anything that you need, please let us know, but do not leave your room. You are not allowed to leave until January 6th. January 6th might as well be 300 years away. The, again, I am not built for prison. I'm not built for isolation, okay? My love language is quality time and affection you know what you need in order to get quality time and affection? You need people. You need other people around to spend time with you and to touch you. You're telling me that no one's going to touch me until January 6th. And I keep asking her, hey, any word from your government? Because the CDC said five days if you don't have symptoms. I fall into that category. Nope, sorry, ma'am. Barbados is still sticking to the 10 days, all 10 days. So, uh, if you want to stay tuned and see how I document my time in prison, my time in island jail, my time on another episode of Got, Got By The Vid, or The Vid Got Me, whatever I decided to name this, make sure you like and subscribe. Tune into the YouTube channel, and we'll, we'll, we'll do this together. Vid Got Me. Just call me JJ19. Because if I was really going to jail, I would snitch on everyone. I would not do it. I'd make a deal right now. I'd make stuff up in order to get the deal to get out because that's how much I am not built for jail. Not even this kind of jail. And I know some of you are gonna be like, it could be so much worse. I don't care. I don't care. My theme song is literally Akon. Lock me up, won't let me out. Oh,